Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, I'm so excited. We're going to be talking about homeschool basics with Trisha Goyer and Christy Clover. They are both authors and homeschool moms. You can find them at trishagoyer.com and christyclover.com, respectively. I'm going to let them tell you a little bit about their homeschool. Hi, Trisha. Welcome. Why don't you tell us a little bit about you? All right. Well, I'm an author, married to John for 30 years. We have 10 kids. So we have six still in the house. We have four out of the house. Um, two are college graduates. Leslie's actually going to graduate school and then two still in college and then six at home from uh, 11th grade all the way down to fourth grade. So I've been doing this homeschooling. I think it's 26 years I've been homeschooling. So that's like a whole career. I don't know. I'm getting ready to retire soon, but I still have a fourth grader. So it's going to no, be a while. Yeah, you know retiring. <laughs> Well, wow. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Christy. Welcome. Hi there. Well, I'm so pleased to be here. I, I mean, I was going to giggle when I get to go after Trisha. I'm like, we only have five kids. <laughs> <laughs> We've only been homeschooling for 12 years. <laughs> but we do have five kids. We just graduated my oldest. Woohoo! And um, it was kind of fun because that's the benefit of homeschooling. We decided to graduate him a year early. Uh, so it was great. We had a little graduation for him, finished him up. And um, now I have a, a high schooler, another high schooler in the house, and then a junior higher and two who are elementary. So my youngest is in first grade. So I've got a long time before I get to put on my retirement you know, I don't know. What do you, I didn't say retirement shoes. And I'm like, why do we have shoes? I don't know. I'm really bad at those little things, but my retirement hat, how about that? There you go. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, when you retire, you really want to take your shoes off and maybe stick them in the sand, which you could do. Yeah, that's true. From California, I could. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I'm so appreciative that you guys did it chose to join me today. I'm so, I'm so thankful. I, you guys wrote a book called homeschool basics and Trisha's got it there over her shoulder right here. Yeah. And there it is. She does too. Oh, there it is. <laughs> 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 Yes. So. I know I just shipped out my last one. I'm like, wait, I think I have one more. <laughs> yes. yes. So we're going to talk a little bit about homeschool basics. Um, you guys, can you tell me a little bit about what inspired you to write the book? Christy inspired us to write the book. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Christy and I spoke um, at a homeschool conference in California years ago and we met. And so we became friends online and we share like the same type of tips, the same type of information. And I mean, really our messages just go so well together about, you know, relax and have fun, enjoy your kids, you know, don't stress out. And she's like, we need to put this together. And so she did a lot of the work, I will say, getting our messages together. And um, it's been such a blessing to be able to hand it to people. And, you know, we talk everything about homeschool laws, how to start, um, how to keep your kids motivated. So it really can cover if you're a brand new homeschooler all the way through to, you know, if you've, if you've been homeschooling a while, just to get that encouragement again. Perfect. So what, what advice do you have for parents who are just getting started? I would say our, our number one tip is just go for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, I think that we have this picture of what it's supposed to look like and everybody gets really nervous and I can't do it. Will I ruin my kids? What if it doesn't work? And so there's all of those questions kind of simmering in everyone's heads. And I think that I just tell people just go for it. And like, in fact, we start the whole book off with our top 10 tips. And the reason we did that is we just wanted to attack that head on. And one of the tips we have in there is you don't have to have all your ducks in a row. And I feel like everyone thinks, okay, I have to have everything lined up. I mean, if it helps those listening in, I literally pulled my kids out of school eight weeks into the school year. It was one of those things we've been praying all summer. And I was just like, oh, no, okay, we're just, we're just gonna do it. We'll just put them back in school. It'll be fine. And then as I was praying and as school kicked off, I'm like, I didn't listen to the Lord. <laughs> so we, I told my husband, like, I think we're supposed to homeschool. And so it was like starting mid-year was crazy. Granted, I had a kindergartner and a first grader, but you know, it doesn't matter. You still like 
really have this this pressure of what homeschool is supposed to look like. So really, you just have to kick off and, and go for it. And we have lots of tips of how to kind of start simply. Mm -hmm. And um, your first year, you're really adjusting to just home life together. So I would just encourage people to just go for it. Yeah. And to add on to that, I think what you, what you Christy was saying too, is that it just kind of get your mind off of what they do in school and then how yeah. you can do things differently. Um, everyone knows I use sunlight curriculum. I love it, but I will use it for multiple grades. So like right now I'm doing three kids in one level because I can tailor their individual math and um, mm -hmm. language, but then so much of the reading out loud, the doing things together. And I think so many times we think like, okay, I need to get a full first grade curriculum, full second grade curriculum, full, you know, especially if, if you have lots of kids at the same time, like me mm -hmm. and no, like they are all learning together. We're having fun together, reading the same stories together. Um, like this year we're learning about the gold rush. And so we will read the books and then we'll get online and say, well, how do you mine for gold? And we're just having fun together. And I think so many times, especially because we went to public school, we think we need to do this and everyone needs to be in desk and everyone needs to have their own curriculum. And I think when I, when I encourage people, I'm like, you do not have to get every single level of every single thing mm -hmm. that would just take so much time and overwhelm you. And so the more that you can do together and realize that it is about relationships and is about enjoying it and reading good books um, instead of just getting worksheets done and moving on to the next thing. Oh, Very yeah. good. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so how would you advise someone to plan and schedule their first homeschooling year, maybe get organized? How, how, how do you advise people to do that? I have lots of advice about that. Because <laughs> I'm like, Kristen, you need to just like, start with this. <laughs> I know. I'll take that question. <laughs> so I do have a course. Um, it's called um, the Ultimate Homeschool Organization course. And um, you can check that out if you wanted to at homeschoolorganization.com. Pretty simple. Um, but we actually do have a chapter in the book that kind of touches on a few key things. And really, uh, for me, I, I think it's easy because I know when I started, I typed in like homeschool organization. I'm like, oh, it'll be great. I'm gonna have all this great advice. And instead of like pretty pictures of people's homeschool rooms popped up, I'm like, that doesn't help me. There's a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. There's so much stuff and paper and it just can be overwhelming. And so I try to help people figure out how to plan by week and not by day. Cause we tend to like want to get a teacher planner and pencil in what we think our beautiful plans are going to be. And we always over plan. Um, but I kind of go through and I like to help people figure out how to create like a basic overview of their year and what they want to accomplish and then kind of attack it by week. And so I have a crate system that I introduce to folks, um, which is literally you're taking pieces and you're putting it into your crate. And so we've done the same thing with our sunlight, um, our sunlight curriculum for this year. And, you know, there's all kinds of different ways you can do it. But what, if you have, well, if you have 10 children, you probably don't want to do it this way, but if you have fewer <laughs> children, um, one of the things I do is I will literally, you can use the big notebook. Um, I think I saw one behind you somewhere, but you can use the big notebook or you can, instead of sticking it in the notebook, you can actually stick it in their little weekly work along with the book that they're going to be reading. So um, what I personally do is all of the readers that we do, I do try to stick that in the crate for my girls because otherwise I don't want to keep all the books that we're doing in the, in the, the you know, the history and element of it because, you know, you're reading several at the same time, but the individual readers are so handy to just put in the crate. And then I plan out my entire year ahead of time. So again, you, you want to have an overview of what you're doing when it comes to homeschool organization, um, but you can really simplify it. And a great way to do that is using a curriculum like Sunlight because it's all there for you. Mm -hmm. um, so it really does make it simple um, to kind of get started. And then it covers so many things. And I would say that's one of the biggest mistakes people do as Trisha already hinted at. You want to, you end up saying, okay, I need curriculum for each child, but you also think I need curriculum for each subject and forgetting that it's all encompassing often. You know, it's like, if you're reading a great book, write a paragraph about it, you know, have them slow down, circle verbs. So, you know, you can do so many really easy things to incorporate it. So we tend to over plan and over organize. And um, that can be a real wrench that you can throw into your homeschool. Um, but yeah, so that's what I've loved about using programs like Sunlight is it just, it's all right there. Yeah. And then just to add on, I also have a whiteboard 
And my kids like to see kind of like what the bigger plan is for the week. So usually Sunday, Sunday night, I'll have like the books we're reading, the chapters we're reading. Um, and so then they can kind of see it. And even during the day, like, okay, we're going to read this. Oh, we're finishing this book today. And they just like to have that visual. I think it helps them to see, okay, this is the plan for the day. But also we do a lot of rabbit trails. So like, again, gold panning, we looked at videos on gold panning. We wrote a story if they were a piece of gold. Um, inside the creek that someone was going to go pan. Like, what would it feel like? The water's cold during that time. You know, would a bear climb over you? So, you know, I kind of will take the, the stuff that we're learning and kind of do fun, creative things too. So we may not even get to all the stuff on the whiteboard. We'll probably get to three quarters of it. But if we're adding in that fun stuff, it just makes it come more uh, more alive to the kids. And I, my kids are all, the three that I have that are the younger kids now are all dyslexic. So like reading is a real struggle for them. So if we can find ways to get the same information across or be really creative with our writing, it really helps them. And I know there's a lot of families out there that um, you know, maybe doing copy work would be too hard for their kids. So let's write three sentences in a story and that might be easier. And so mm -hmm. I've had to learn to be more creative because the kids, my younger kids, just really struggle with some of those types of things. And that's okay, like they're still learning. And I think it's important to, to remember that like, by the end of the year, they know so much. We might not have hit every single thing in the curriculum, but they have learned. And I think that's the whole goal. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's all great. I, I do want to say organization and scheduling and how to do all that. It, try many different things. If you're mm -hmm. struggling, yes. try something else. There's so many mm -hmm. ideas out there. The blog at sunlight or blog.sunlight.com can give you a bunch of ideas on both of those things. Um, and then both of these two have a blog where you yep. can read more about these things on their blog. So yeah. <laughs> um, definitely do your research. And if something's not working, move on, do something else. Mm -hmm. So um, it does, the homeschool provide you the flexibility to keep yeah. looking for something that works for you. Yeah, so. absolutely. So the book does feel because homeschool basics, mostly for new homeschool parents, but it's not. So tell me a little bit about what you would maybe say if a veteran homeschooler just needs a little pick me up, a little more advice. Yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, one of the things we talk about is looking at what the kids, um, their learning styles are. And I think so many times, if we're doing something the same way and it seems like this is not working, really looking and seeing what are our kids' learning styles. And we talk, we list the learning styles in the book and give us tips for how to take the curriculum they're using and applying it to those learning styles. So I mentioned my kids, reading is really hard. So the hands-on kinesthetic learning really works for them. So if, we're, if they're doing stuff with their hands or even when we're reading out loud, if they're able to use their hands and model something or draw something that really helps and so I think because we you know are used to using the same books and doing the same things sometimes looking beyond that and seeing like what would really be fun for our kids what would work for our kids can kind of breathe life into your homeschool and so we give a lot of ideas of things we've tried things we've done and then really sometimes it's even asking your kids like what what can we do with this um, and maybe we'll bake something, maybe we'll do something different. And I think that will really help, especially when we feel like, oh my goodness, do we have to do another worksheet or do we have to do another thing, looking beyond that and doing something different. And I think that all parents would totally get the fact that there's seasons and your kid doesn't stay in what you, you know, like we think we got it all figured out. <laughs> We're like, here, I nailed it, we got it, it's all going smoothly. And then like, there's a new season and there's a new interest or there's a change or a shift. And so it's really important to be able to adjust your homeschool to that as well and be flexible. And so like Trisha was saying, try something new. And so whether it is using a resource like Homeschool Basics or a blog like on Sunlight or whatever it is, you're trying to kind of figure out how you can move and shift your homeschool to work with you. And so sometimes veteran homeschool moms, it's just, we kind of just need that little like boost of encouragement, like you can do it, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, you really can. And I think what's really powerful is having families, you know, like I always try to look for those mentor moms in my life who are at that life stage just above where I'm at. Um, and so it's really helpful to be able to hear that voice. Um, and so both Trish and I come with a lot of different experience and 
So just trying to encourage parents, like you really just hang in there. You can do it. It is worth it. And to be able to even look at, you know, like Trisha's got grown kids who, mm-hmm. you know, Leslie has her own family now and her oldest son, Corey has his own family. And so it's just neat to kind of see like homeschool experiment worked and look at work in her life and yeah. his life and their life. And so it's, I think that's also really encouraging. And we try to bring that into the book as well. That's great. So tell me how you personally keep yourself and your kids motivated. Cause we all kind of have the, we, you know, we're, we're hitting January and February and it's, it's tough. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's definitely tough. No, personally, we kind of just, we have goals sometimes. And sometimes the goals is are easy as like having something planned for a Friday. Like today, as we speak, I have a play date here. And so that was very encouraging for the kids to get things done. So I try to plan some fun into our week and into our year to, to purposely give them like that. If I get this done, then this. And so um, that I call it kind of like the, if, then, if we get this done, then we can do this. But fun is always a motivator. And I know it is for me and it typically is for kids too. Um, and sometimes if you're reading a book, like, you know, I always, I always kind of use the example of, um, farmer boy and, you know, and even some of the books that we've been going through right now, um, with sunlight, like, you know, plan something on a Friday to cook last mm-hmm. year, we, um, read, a uh, little pear, which is about a little yeah. boy in China and he loves dumplings. And so we made dumplings one day. And so there's so many fun ways to just plan it for like Friday or the end of the school day so that your kids have something to look forward to. And it's that much more motivating to just kind of get them through it. <laughs> and if food is involved, I'm all, I'm all for it. So yeah. that's all you need to, to get me motivated. Yeah. And I think it is like Christy was saying, do like switch it up a little bit, like get an audio book instead of me reading that loud. Maybe mm-hmm. we'll get an audio book and we'll, well, it's the same stories that we're doing in our curriculum, but then we're like making something or doing a craft while we're listening to the audio book. Today, I told them if we get our work done, um, we're going to have a movie day. So we put on White Christmas and we watched half of White Christmas today. And the, we, had, we had to watch the sisters, you know, when they're singing again a couple of times. Oh, yes. But, you know, and, and another thing I did is I did a, a sh- worksheet that had their name and like for math facts or different things that we're working on that's more tedious. I said, okay, if we work on this every day this week, then Friday, we're going to go out to frozen yogurt. And so, again, when you can see like we can add fun into it, it's not just um you know about getting everything done but another times I will put board games in the middle of the table and so I'm like we're going to read you know read this and do this then we're going to play a game and then we'll finish up and so those types of things I think bringing fun having a movie day you know um having popcorn as you're listening to an audiobook or whatever does bring fun and it gets motivated and we'll also change things up so my daughter was here she lives in Europe um, her and her daughter were here for a lot of September. And so we said, okay, we're not going to be doing a ton of read out louds because we had a one-year-old running around, but we found activities that we did. So we did a lot of field trips and different activities um, outside of the house during that month that we can make it fun. Um, and then we got back to our regular curriculum once she was able to get home because we only get to see her once a year. And so, again, you can adjust your schedule to maybe you're going to, if it's really hot in the summer, maybe you're going to do read out louds during then and then when there's a lot of activities in the fall then you want to get outside you can make more of relaxed days and get outside and I love that that with homeschooling you can adjust your schedule and switch things around during the year Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely so what are your favorite things or thing about homeschooling and how do you keep that in your like how do you remind yourself of it to keep yourself going every day well, for me, I love reading out loud. <laughs> so um, it's just a time. And I never had anyone reading out loud. I don't ever remember, like, I didn't grow up in a reading home, but I loved, like, I would love going to the library and I loved books. And so for me, sometimes if I'm thinking, oh, I wish we could just relax today, I'm thinking, well, I just got to read a story. Like, this is, I'm going to get up and we're going to have fun and I get to read a story. And so I love reading that loud. And I try to, you know, sometimes I'll make funny voices and do different things. And so that's like my thing that if I think that I would rather just sleep in that day, I'm like, well, I'm just going to get up and read a story. And once we get going, then we get going. So that's something that I enjoy. 
Yeah, I personally like my favorite thing about homeschooling is just the the family dynamics that mm-hmm. we get to have is be part of, and it's been fun like um, just watching as you know so many people have gotten to try out homeschooling <laughs> recently, <laughs> yeah. and it's been really powerful to see some of these people be like, oh, I didn't, you know, it's kind of cool having my kids around. It's like everything's oh no, don't have my kids around, but it really is a beautiful thing because we have a pretty strong family dynamic and you know, life gets busy, you know, my teenagers, oh my goodness, like they're working, they've got all this other stuff going on. And it's just nice that they're home. And so like, we can all have lunch together or breakfast together. And just, there's so many more opportunities to really build that strong family foundation. And so that's a really big key for me. And, um, and I think it's a daily reminder as I watch as my, you know, six foot, you know, two and six foot three son walk into the room, like it goes fast. And, you know, so as I'm trying to treasure that time with my younger kids and still like enjoy the time. And I, I'm that weird mom that at the dinner table, I have that moment where I get all weepy and I'm like, it's going to be gone soon. <laughs> like, you're all still here. Um, but it's beautiful. And so that's probably my favorite thing. My other thing that I really love is that um, we have the flexibility. And so uh, we will take vacations in the middle of the school year, which kind of got a little wonky with everybody else being, you know, homeschool families this year. Cause I'm like, Hey, go away. <laughs> this is, this is our time. Like you're supposed to be in school. <laughs> so, so that has been a real benefit. It's just the flexibility and being able to just change things up. And a big part of that is that when life happens, um, you can be part of that. So we had a family member who needed, you know, kind of somewhat of an emergency open heart surgery. Like we kind of found out a month before. So we changed everything, created, you know, uh, some stuff and been, you know, brought bins of stuff. And we were able to kind of homeschool on the go and be where we needed to be and, and to really love on and bless family. And we've had families stop in. And, and I think that's the bigger part that people forget about is that, we're not just training our kids to have a great education. We're training them to be responsible, caring, Mm -hmm. you know, amazing adults. I hope, you know, I want them to love the Lord and have a love for learning, but I want them to have character as well. So when they get to experience us pouring into others, um, I think it's, it's, it's a bigger benefit that you can ever get from reading a story. Yeah, so good. And I love what Christy was saying, even about the family relationships. I had to take one child to a, uh, uh, orthodontist appointment. And so my 26 year old who's in college, but he lives in town. I had him come over and babysat, babysit. And I walked in the house and it's like really quiet. I'm like, what's going on? And I walk in my room and I hear this, hello. And he was hiding. <laughs> they were all playing hide and seek. So my 26 year old with all the kids, they're all around the house. And I'm like, okay, well, you're playing hide and go seek. That's fine. <laughs> but even when my daughter like lives in Europe and comes and my sons are over, we sit there and play board games. They will talk mm-hmm. about books that they're reading. I'm like, this is, I'm so glad that now they're 31, 28, 26, and then down that we have these relationships and they still mm-hmm. love to get together and play games and talk about books and they'll critique movies they thought. And I, I'll just sit there like Christy, like sit back and go, this was worth all the time to see the connections that they have with each other. We'll go on vacation and take a huge pile of, of board games and just sit there and play yeah. with them. And it's like, okay, this is what the type of family I wanted. Not everyone just grown and living their own lives, but we love coming together and spending that time together. And I think that really came from fostering those relationships as they grew up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good. So um, Sunlight is a lot of books as we know. But also you're doing all the subjects. So how do you make sure that you get everything done? And how would you advise other parents um, who might be struggling with that? That's I such think a one of the great question. things. Yeah, well, go ahead, Patricia. No, go ahead. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, one of the things I love is that you guys actually did really change up the way you have the layout for the teacher's manual. And so it makes it really easy and streamlined to kind of stay on top of things. But what I like to encourage parents with is that you are ultimately in charge of your school and your kids. And so I always suggest to people to get out personally, this is my personal thing, get the four days of sunlight because I guarantee you, you'll have a fifth day that sneaks in there with your other homeschool stuff. And if you have a co-op and other things, it gives you some flexibility, Um, but staying on top of the books. Um, I had a girlfriend who was, I think it was August and she was just like, 
we still haven't finished all our sunlight books. I'm like, you know, it's okay to not read a book, right? Like you don't have to finish all the books. Like it's a suggestion. And if you're doing other things and rabbit trailing, that's good. And so I always encourage people rabbit trail, like Trisha was talking about, have fun. If your child, you know, develops an interest in something, pause and get more, you know, more books about it and do more research and kind of go on that rabbit trail. Um, but I am, I believe in the power of an X. Like I love my list, but if I don't have a little check mark by them, it will literally play with my brain. So I just cross things out. So if there's a book that we're not, I haven't run into one that we haven't loved the sunlight yet, but we have with other curriculum, I'll just toss it and just like, forget it. We're not doing that one. Let's go to here. And and so, and we do have the benefit, we have a lot of children. So if one person doesn't like it, then often somebody else does. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's just, it's nice to have an overview of what needs to get done. And I think, again, like with sunlight, it does make it easy because everything's there. It's all listed out in chunks. Um, but what's also nice is that, you know, you can read ahead, you can catch up easily. And so I was just <laughs> this week because we were gone um, at a family member's house and we didn't quite get all the things done right before we left. So I was just adjusting things and literally moving, you know, in my binder, I was just moving weeks so around and kind of circling things we needed to come back to. But there's just so many ways to be flexible. And I think that as much as we want to be able to check everything off and do it on the day, it says day one, it's Monday, we've got to get this done. Just know, like, you don't have to, like, you've got to just, you know, take a step back and be like, it's okay. I'm not going to get it all done this week. And maybe we'll skip this chapter. You know, like if it's a chapter that doesn't matter. <laughs> Like you don't want to skip over chapters. That, that, that not have, in your you know, historical teeth. novels. Don't skip yeah, over chapters. Yeah, not in your historical work. novels, <laughs> but you know, like a little devotion here or there, like we'll skip that and we'll just move on to something else. Yeah. And another thing we've done is like we did um, road trips last year and, you know, we're in the car for a long time. So some of the read out louds or even readers, I got them an audiobook. And so in the car, we listened to Sarah mm -hmm. Plain at all, which was one of our books. We listened to the sign of a beaver. So we're getting school work done but they're enjoying it because yeah. we're on a road trip so you don't have to like feel like okay I have to read it out loud another thing I do especially um when it gets hard for kids to write a lot if they can answer the questions I just have them tell me like there's some things I want them to write but there's some things if instead of you know writing out all the answers if they could just tell me the answers that will work mm -hmm. too and I've also paid older kids to do science projects with younger kids so I'm like hey you want to earn it. five bucks <laughs> uh do the science project all the materials are here hand it over older kid loves earning five bucks little kid loves that it's not always mom <laughs> with them and so I've done those types of things too and I was I want to throw one of the things you you said something that triggered that and um that is when I'm reading a lot to my kids I'll allow them to do, do other schoolwork um, or other things. So like, you know, maybe they're putting together a puzzle for doing something, mm -hmm. but sometimes when you're kinetic, doing something kinetic and tactile, it helps them to hear it and receive it. Um, and so like they'll do copy work where they don't have to read and understand it. And they're allowed to do math as long as they're, it's not a math sentence. Um, so they can't be reading something else. But there's lots of other things that they can be physically doing um, while I'm reading aloud. So sometimes we'll do that. And sometimes I'll like, maybe we'll have a load of laundry that we're folding, but just doing something while mm -hmm. I'm reading really does help. Cause it's easy, especially if they're just sitting there to become distracted. So if you're purposely distracting them with a task mm -hmm. um, while you're reading, it's really been helpful for me. Absolutely. So one thing that we find important at sunlight is um, helping our children become lifelong learners. Mm -hmm. And I know that you guys cover this in the book a little bit too. So talk a little bit about how you help your kids develop, you know, lifelong learning, yeah. the love I of lifelong learning. That's yeah, what I, <laughs> I think that I, mean, I think the rabbit trails do help with that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we got a kit to, and we mined our own gold and we did posters and right, did the map of where they went on the, um, the, where, how the trip, they traveled to California. And so I think once kids, if they have a question and they'll ask me something, I'm like, well, let's go look it up. So I'll even pause in the middle of the chapter and we'll go look it up. Then we'll come back to the chapter. And I think once they realize like, 
I have a question and we can go look for it or we could do something or we could try it ourselves. It really helps them be lifelong learners. And it's, it's cool to see like my adult kids. I mean, my daughter that lives in Europe, she learned a whole new language. She's been living there, trying it out. She learned, she taught herself to knit, which I don't know how to knit. And so when, they, when they're interested in something or they have a question about something, pausing and like, well, let's go explore that. And so it may seem like we may not finish three chapters like we were supposed to. We may only finish one. But if they're taking the time to look it up, to try it out, to ask those questions, that's what really helps them when they become adults to figure out like, oh, I know how to find the answer. I know how to look for something. Or I'm gonna go try to do this myself. And so those rabbit trails, we may think, okay, we can't, we don't have time to stop and figure that out right now. But really I think that does bring in the lifelong learning with them because they could, they could figure it out for themselves. Yeah, and ditching tedious work. If you find that your child is complaining about, sometimes they're just lazy. <laughs> Yeah. or just would rather be doing something else. Um, that's normal, but um, sometimes it's an indicator that something else is going on. So, you know, maybe there is some dyslexia. Maybe there is like just, they plain all simply just don't like the topic or they, you know, they have too many of like, I find that sometimes unintentionally like writing assignments or like things that require the pen to paper, um, there might be too many things that fall on the same day. So we just switch it up and like, it's okay, again, like I said, the power of the X, like ditch it, like throw it out, skip an assignment or move it to another part of the week. Um, if there's a book that they are not resonating with, then we'll skip it. If there's one that they really love, then maybe we're gonna add in a book mm -hmm. that's a good follow-up to it. Um, so just really kind of paying attention to what's working and not working. Um, and I literally kind of keep, I have a little journal that I kind of, a little page in my journal that I literally write the school year on the top and I just take notes. Like, this was a really good, like, what happened today? Today was perfect. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what did we do that was different? And so like, I'm like, oh, we did this first. And so I'll make a note of that. Like, okay, it helped to move writing to the beginning. It helped to, to do this. So trying to figure out those little ways because especially if you are saving tasks that they don't enjoy for later in the day, they're not going to like that. They're not going to mm -hmm. get through it. So sometimes saving like those favorite pieces of the day to like, let's get all of this work done. And now we get to do this. Um, it really does help. And again, like Trisha said, follow the rabbit trails. Rabbit trails are the secret to homeschooling. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about character development. Um, homeschooling, any, any parenting is not just about act academics. We really are working towards developing these excellent characters for our character development in our children. So talk to me a little bit about what advice you would give parents as far as character development. I think one of the things, because we had kids that we adopted later, um, that we did not raise with certain character and value. Um, we adopted a sibling group that w of four that were 11, 13, 13, and 15 when the adoption was finalized. And so first of all, they went from public school to homeschooling, which are like, what, what just happened to my world? But second of all, they weren't used to like hearing Bible stories or memorizing verses. And I know, especially maybe junior high and high school, sometimes they're like, I don't want to hear this, or this is boring. And I think what helped me the most is when I was mentoring young moms years ago, and we did a devotion, I think these girls are not even listening. But years later, they're like, remember that story? Or what was that verse you shared? And they would like message me on Facebook or ask me questions. And I realized like, even if it seems like they're not interested, they don't care. And even my teenagers, I'm like, you could just put your head down. Like, I'm still going to read this. We're still going to listen to the song. We're still going to work on memorizing the verse. If Even if there's those kids that are resistant, it's getting in there and it's getting in their heart. So I just want that encouragement because I know sometimes at conferences or when I'm speaking or get messages from people like my, my teenager, my junior hire just doesn't even want to be involved. And I'm like, let them put their head down. It's still gonna go in, they're still gonna get it. And I'll say over time, my girls have loved that. Or when we do some of the YWAM books, the use of the mission missionary stories at the beginning, they're like, mm -hmm. what's this about? And then all of a sudden they're like, oh my gosh, that's my favorite book ever. I think we did Gladys Alward last year in our homeschool curriculum or sunlight curriculum. And so it's like, it seems like they're not going to be interested, but you just keep going. Don't get discouraged. Um, you'll see the fruit of that maybe years from now, but know that those things really do 
take root and they'll grow. And so, you know, years now they'll say, what was that scripture verse that you read like two years ago during our morning time or whatever? It really does grow, even though it doesn't seem like they're paying attention. Oh, yeah. And I would just say when you especially when there's character, I mean, you want to develop character in your kids and that's just going to come from being intentional in your parenting mm -hmm. and, you know, other things. But I would say when there's character um, needs <laughs> that need to be developed, um, you really can't underestimate the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. um, so the power of prayer and the power of God's word. And so oftentimes when I'm trying to develop character qualities that I feel like, you know, overarching for everyone that would be helpful. I'm often going to scripture and I'm looking at scripture that will point out examples of that character quality in action and examples of that character quality when it's not <laughs> in action. And so you're seeing the two different things. And so then I'm kind of like almost sneaking it in and we're, that's where we're reading from the Bible that day, or that's where we're doing different things. But a lot of books have character in them. And so mm -hmm. you always have these characters in the book and typically you can kind of draw that out. And so sometimes I'll just ask questions like, what did you think? Would you think that was a good choice? What, you know, what was that like? Was that, was that selfish or was that, you know, was that selfless? And so we talk about the difference between the two and, and what would we do in a similar situation? So just having conversations. Um, but I will say one of my favorite books that I use, in fact, I just pulled it out, um, is a book called Hero Tales. And what I like about that is they have a character quality they have the definition of that character quality. They have a verse that goes with it that shows that. And then um, they have a quick little missionary story that goes along with it. Um, and so it's been a fun book that we'll pull in for family devotions here and there. Um, and we've used it just throughout different years. Um, but it's, it's really helpful to, I think, give them examples. And oftentimes character development happens when a child is frustrated over a math problem or over yeah. something else. And it's like, well, we're not learning about math anymore. We're learning about respect and how to <laughs> communicate with other people when you are frustrated. And um, so that's just it. You're just kind of always, I mean, you know, we're, we're called to be fruit inspectors as, as parents and we're looking for the fruit of the spirit in our children. And so, um, and that's really what we're doing. And we have that opportunity as homeschool parents to get to do it all day long. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it's just so fun. <laughs> But no, it, I mean, you will see the fruit later on sometimes, but sometimes it's just, um, yeah, you just have to try to be intentional here and there just to point things out. And I think once we, we can even let them know, like sometimes I'll read a verse and they're like, you were saying, you put this verse out because we were arguing earlier. And I'm like, well, yes, like sometimes I'll just <laughs> do it. But sometimes like when it came, we, I had a whole book called The Grumble for a Year where we became intentional on not grumbling, which I grumble too. Like I realized like, I am not grateful. I grumble, I grumble when they don't do their work, when they're not picking up after themselves. And so, because we said, we're gonna work on this together. We memorize verses, we notice grumbling, we notice gratitude, but I found myself apologizing, like, cause I was grumbling and when I'll come, I'm like, oh, you guys, I wasn't kind this morning. I was grumbling, you know, about whatever and apologizing and then praying it, it really when I can point out myself when I mess up and when I have to apologize and when I say you know this is my character flaw and I'm working on this too then they're more open to like okay mom's working on it yes we forgive you mom and later they'll come and say I was grumbling will you forgive me so I think sometimes like we're not perfect. We're with our kids all day. We're grumbling. We're complaining. We get frustrated just like they get frustrated. And we're able to apologize and, and they can see that. Then they can see like, okay, this is all of us working on it together. Not just, you know, parents have it perfect and, you know, we're, we're messing up. But it's because, you know, as homeschooling parents, I think we are learning and growing just as much as our kids. And we get our character tested all the time too. Exactly. And I would say that... Um, yeah, I was going to say, um, Trisha's Grumble for a Year. She also has a book called Calming Angry Kids. Mm -hmm. Those two are really key books to, to just help you as a parent. Mm -hmm. um, but the other book that I am a big fan of, I'm a Trisha Goyer fan. <laughs> uh, but it is Prayers That Change History. And she always laughs because we do our booths together when we speak at the same convention. And I'm like, I will sell all these books on this table because that's like <laughs> the one I'm always pulling up. Um, it's so good. And and that book can even be used like throughout any year. So if you happen to be in a certain area in, in history, you can add that one in. But prayers that change history are great because 
she put little conversation like little conversation starters is there in there as well and so you can really be looking for character and seeing how people solve things through prayer so like I was saying like prayer is such a big part of it and so when you can tell your kids you're praying for them and you can show them how prayers have also helped you know historically as well and it's it's really amazing so I, I love those are Three of my favorite um, books that Trisha put together. The, well, the non you, or the, the, the nonfiction. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, I'm like, I'll do my plug for Trisha. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, in your book that you've written together, Homeschool Basics, you guys identify, you started with this, 10 um, tips, 10 tips. Give me your top two or three that you pull out from those 10 tips um, that you want parents to walk away with right now. I would say, I mean, we've already kind of touched on a few things, Mm -hmm. just just slipped them in there. Um, So flexibility is big. Um, Another one that I think is really important and people don't do it enough is to plan breaks. Um, So it kind of goes along with flexibility, but you need to know that you will burn out if you have more than six to eight weeks of solid school. You know, at the beginning of the year, we kind of have, you know, that get to Thanksgiving and then get to Christmas and have a break. But sometimes you might need something like in October, Mm -hmm. like early October, um, and then definitely, especially depending upon when Easter falls, if Easter's in March, you might be good. But if it's like in late April, you have got to figure out something maybe in February. So I try to be very intentional at planning breaks into our schedule and never be afraid to just spontaneously say, and this Friday, we're not doing school today. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, just you need, you really need to do that. And I think my, my other um, big tip is, and I think Trisha touched on it earlier, is please, you've got to like try to remove that public school mindset. There's so much of what we have in our brains that like it ha- this is what school looks like because so many of us did go to public mm-hmm. school. I mean, for heaven's sakes, when I first thought I was gonna be homeschooling, I was like, I need to make a bulletin board and I need to change it out seasonally. <laughs> it's just like, no, I don't. <laughs> We're doing school at home. Like that's fun and cute, but like, I don't have to do that. So. Um, really letting go of what the public school does and kind of taking ownership of your own school. Yeah. Another thing we talk about too, is just knowing your state requirements. And I think Mm -hmm. so many times, especially when there's this curriculum and that curriculum, we teach this and we teach that we kind of like get overwhelmed. When my kids were in high school, I realized like, oh, they only need to do two years of this and they only need to do three years of this. And so I think so many times we get so overwhelmed because we hear all these voices coming and know like, this is only what's required. I think in Arkansas, it's only like three years of math. And so I'm like, okay, so we could spread this out. They're really struggling. We could turn this into an extra year or whatever. And mm-hmm. so I think if we just look at what's required, sometimes we just need to, especially in high school, if we just need to focus like this is what we need to get done and focus on that because there's so many things that we could do or we could try and um, that can be overwhelming. Absolutely. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for joining me um, to talk about this. And you guys, again, you can find trishagoyer.com, christyclover.com to learn more about these fantastic women. Thanks again. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is fun.